Hello everyone, it's Steve. It's been a while since I made a cryptocurrency video, but Bitcoin just hit an all-time high today. We're at over $63,000. I realized that we might in the future this this might date the video. You might hear that's you might hear that number and then we might be lower in the future. I think we might be higher. But it's been a while since I made a video about cryptocurrency and I figured I would because there's sort of this fervor now that we've hit an all-time high and people are getting interested in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, I figured that I'd do a video on how to secure and store, how to store your cryptocurrency securely. Um, that's one of the, one of the big challenges with cryptocurrency. One of the liberating things about it is that it sort of free, frees you from the necessity of a bank. But with that comes more responsibility on your part. It comes more um, potential for uh, screwing things up. You, I'm sure if, you've, if you're at all interested in this topic, I'm sure you've heard things about people losing passwords and not having access to money. So... I don't want any of that to happen if you are if you're interested in cryptocurrency that would be a that would be a bad thing so I obviously don't want any of that happening to you so what what I've got for you is some information about how to safely secu how to safely secure your bitcoins specific and this this will be this will be um, related to Bitcoin mostly um, some of this will be applicable to other cryptocurrencies but Mostly to Bitcoin. What I'm going to be showing you, um, some of the, some of what I, some of the strategies strategies I'm going to be showing you are exclusive to Bitcoin. Though they are they they can be applied to other cryptocurrencies. The how how the how of going through the technicals is going to be a little bit different, but same idea applies. So in my other video on cryptocurrency, the video I made for my wife, I talked about how there are a couple of ways you can store your cryptocurrency one of those ways is with an online exchange i mean this is a this is a popular way people like to store their cryptocurrency is just leave it with a wallet provider like coinbase gemini kraken some of these others that makes your money easily accessible you can easily if you decide you ever want to cash it out trade it into trade it into dollars or some other um Crypto asset, you can do that easily because it's sitting there on the exchange for you. Obviously, though, this, this introduces some of what's called counterparty risk, meaning that you are not technically in control of your money there, just like when you're bringing your money to a bank. Your bank is the one who is lending your money out and doing other things with it. So when you are leaving your when you're leaving your crypto assets on an exchange like a Coinbase or Gemini, the the exchange is the one who is in control of your private keys, um, and that introduces a certain amount of risk. They might they might default on certain financial obligations, have to close, and then what happens to your coins? Um, they might get shut. They might get shut down, or have who knows what, the the number of possibilities there with with someone else custodying your your money for you. So that's one possibility. The more secure option and you might you might have heard people use this term is what's known as cold storage or using a using what's called also called a paper wallet um, and I want to show you how to go about setting up paper wallets for yourself so if you remember if you go back if you go back and watch my other video on cryptocurrency the uh, the PowerPoint I made for my wife and I'll link it up I'll link it up here for you if you go back and watch that one um, what I say there about what a wallet is, a wallet is simply a pairing of a private key and a public key. That's all that a wallet is. So when you are making your own or you're, you're, you're creating paper wallets, what you're doing is you are store, you are creating those private key, public key pairs offline and you're printing them on paper or you're put storing them some other way. You're not leaving them. You're not giving those private and public keys to a Coinbase, to a Gemini. 
Okay, so I want to show you how to set up those private keys and public keys uh, securely, and then how to, um, and then what to do, want, what to do once you have created them. So I'm going to show you now a a website that is available to anyone. It's called bitaddress.org. This is bitaddress.org. Now you're going to notice you're going to notice a couple of things. It is a you're going to notice as I move my my mouse around the screen here that some crazy little green dots are showing up. Um, but what what it, what's actually happening as I move my mouse around is I'm actually creating what's called entropy or randomness that is being fed into uh, whoops it's being fed into an algorithm that's going to then generate my random public key and private key. So um, that's that's one way you can can generate randomness on this website is to is to move your mouse around and it'll create a random create a random public key and private key. So that's so if you if you remember and you go back to my other video, uh, this should be familiar to you, the, what you're seeing here. This is your public key, okay? And then this is your private key. As I said as I said to you in that video, I think there are more public key private key combinations I think than there are like atoms in the universe or something. So this is like a this is like a crazy a crazy number of of possible addresses. So I'm not I'm not in any way wasting addresses here um, by, by showing you these. Um, I also I would not use either of these addresses now that you see what the private key is it would be it would be highly highly dangerous to put any funds in this wallet because the anybody who's watching this video um, would have access to this private key and would be able to spend be able to spend the money. So one of the one of the ways that you could create new wallet addresses on this site is by just moving your mouse around. If I wanted to do it again, uh, and then you just you generate a new one, and it'll create a new one for you. Um, to be secure, to be to be safe, um, and I could do a separate video on this. I don't want I don't want to do I don't want to waste too much time on it now. But you might be asking yourself if you're if you're somebody who's into crypto and you're and you're thinking about security and you're sort of paranoid about um, things going, things malfunctioning and losing money. I, I, I wouldn't, I shouldn't even say paranoid, just, just being diligent about things. Um, what a lot of people like to do when they, when they see a website like this is to check, is to confirm that this website is actually from the person who, who said this, who created the site. Um, and the way you, the way you can do that um, is by verifying on the bottom. You see here, there's a thing that says P PGP that, that stands for pretty good privacy, um, and then there's a and there's a number here. And what that what that basically is is that whoever created whoever created this open source site for you um, is a certain person, and they've they've signed the site basically. They, they've 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 cryptographically signed the site saying, hey, this is this is my work. It's not some scammer who's gonna create fake addresses for you and take your money. Um, so what you can do if you're so inclined um, is you can you can verify using PGP whether this website is authentic or not. And I'd recommend that. I've done it. It's not hard. I can do a, I can do a separate video on how to ver on how to verify things cryptographically like that. If you if you're curious and you want a video on that uh, leave me a comment and I'll and I will uh, and I'll make a video on that. Um, okay, so that's that's the bottom here. That's what this this whole thing means. This whole PGP and SIG thing. That's just a signature. Um, this this is the cryptographic signature, and you want to make sure this um, this comports with the person who uh, who created the site. Um, so what I would recommend is you see the site. What I'd recommend. If you want to really make sure that your cryptocurrency is secure, is I would not I would not generate these private and public keys online. What I would do is I would download them. I would download sorry I would download this website, and the way the way you do that is you just go up to go up to your web browser, click File Save As. I can't show it to you here. I think I cut off the. Uh, uh, oh no, you can yeah you can see it. Go to Save Page As. 
Okay, and then you can select save it as an HTML file. Click save, and then you will save you will save the website as a file. Okay, and the, and the website the website works entirely independently and offline, so you don't have you don't have to be on the internet to use it. And I would I would then take that file and I'd put it on a flash drive. Preferably, I'd put that on I'd put it on a flash drive that's never been. If you really want to be secure, I'd put it on a flash drive that's never been online before. I'd I'd put it on a on a CD or if you still burn CDs, um, put it on a CD. Um, first time I got into Bitcoin, that was how I did it. I burned it on a CD and I had it. I had a, a CD that I was using it on. So put it on something that's secure, like a flash drive that's never been online, um, a CD, and then take that take that file. Take this website file and open it up on a laptop, some other device that's never been online before, and and preferably will never be online before. Will never be online going forward. Um, this might seem like a lot of work, but if you really, like I said, if you're cutting out, you're cutting out a bank and you want to really be safe and secure and not and make sure that your money is uh, uncensorable and un unconfiscatable. This is sort of you got to jump through a couple of hoops. So save save this website, and then on, on a flash drive or CD, and then on an offline laptop. Open up the site and generate your your wallets. Okay, so you you can generate a wallet just by clicking generate. Um, what you can also do is it's been a while since I used this. You can also uh, where is it? this one yeah it's also this one so you can create <clears throat> you can create what's called a uh, I think it's this hang on there's one where you can type in a bunch of random I think it's a brain wallet Oh, uh, maybe maybe not. Maybe they changed they changed it. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I I I was looking at it incorrectly. Okay. So, what you can a brain wallet some of these terms are going to be some of these terms are going to be strange to you. But a brain wallet is basically so just like in the beginning when we were when we were using the randomness of my mouse moving across the screen to generate a bunch of random letters and numbers. Those random letters and numbers were then fed, like I said, fed into, fed into an algorithm that then spits out a private key and public key combination. You can also, if you want, put in something that you'll remember. I I would prefer I would prefer you not do that. I mean, I could, I could say something like, "Hi." My name is Steven, and I love crypto. Okay. okay, so that that sentence with the comma and spaces and everything generated this random public key, private key combination. If I add another letter to it, it should generate I love cryptos. It should generate a new one. See, yeah, generated a new one. Um, I would not. I would not do what I just did. I would not write an English sentence. I would not do something like that because it's, and I think the website might even might even warn you that if it's too if it's too short, it's 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 easy. It's, it can be easily guessed. So if it, if it can be easily guessed, like "Hi, my name is Stephen," that's not a particularly unique sentence. Um, so I would not use something like that as my randomness to generate a public key, private key. What I've done in the past when I've generated my my wallets offline is I'll spend 10, 10 20 seconds just typing a bunch of random, you know, a bunch of random nonsense. Whoops. Ah, no, I'm playing my, playing my uh, Beethoven music there. Like, type in a bunch of random nonsense. Okay, and something that I know, a bunch of spaces maybe, I'll, put, I'll do some 
do some of this, and then I'll press it. Okay. Now I know that it's it's. Could somebody could somebody guess this exact same thing? Put it through put it through, um, put it through Bitcoin's, put it through Bitcoin's algorithm, the SHA two fifty six algorithm, and come up with my private key, public key. Yeah, they could if they had this exact string of random craziness here. Um, but the longer you make it, the more crazy you make it, um, the, that becomes an, an impossibility, you know, a near impossibility for somebody to, to just brute force guess that. Okay, so what I'd recommend is not putting in something easy like, hello, oh good, see the website tells you a strong passphrase is important to avoid someone guessing your passphrase and stealing your bitcoins, there you go, see? So I would not I would not even type a coherent sentence in there. What I would do is I would do the randomness that I just do the randomness I just showed you or generate the addresses this way, which is use which is these are all you the this this option is using the randomness of my mouse my mouse movement. Okay, so I would so so that so that's how I would approach it. Okay? Once you've created, once you've created your your Bitcoin public key and private key combinations, what do you do with them? Okay, so I I like to save them to a spreadsheet. That's what I've done, um, and so I'm going to show you that right now. I mean, it's pretty pretty simple, but I'll show you that right now. Okay, let's open up. I've already created this. Excel document. And so what I could do is take my public key, paste it here, and then take my private key, put it here, and there I go. I've got I've got a wallet. Okay. What you could do is generate I like to generate a bunch of addresses so that I can use it. I can use them in the future. Like I said, you don't have to worry about running out of addresses. There are near near infinite number of them. So I wouldn't I would not worry about putting 10, 20, 100 addresses into a spreadsheet, saving it. Um, now remember, saving it on an offline laptop. Um, I might even do a I might even do a separate video. I might even do a separate video on. Um, on how to set up your your offline laptop. If you want if you want a video on that, let me know. But because there's a little, goes, a little bit goes into it, but it's not it's not very work intensive. So create a spreadsheet like this. If you want to be extra secure, and I always I always err on that side. Uh, I would not have. I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes. I would not have the words public key and private key in the in the document just in case. Somebody found it. They wouldn't necessarily know what it what it is. It just looks like a bunch of random letters and numbers. Um, if it says private key, public key, then they're going to be able to know it's it's a crypto. It's a it's a it's using um, public key, private key cryptography. It's probably a cryptocurrency. And then they can look at the, they can look at the the format of the addresses and say, okay, well, um, we know that Bitcoin private keys often start with five, and certain certain wallet addresses begin with one. And then they'll be able to they'll be able to figure out what it is. So I would not I would not have public key private key there on the on the actual spread in the actual spreadsheet. But create your Excel spreadsheet with as many addresses as you want, ones that you're going to be able to use in the future. And as one of the things I like to do is as I use as I use addresses, I like to I always once I a good a good operate a good a good um, best a best practice for when you're using your if you are custodying your own cryptocurrency which is the gold standard of uh, of security if you're doing that yourself then a good a good practice or a best practice for cryptocurrencies that you not reuse addresses because once you send a transaction out of this wallet in order to send a transaction from this wallet, you have to bring this private key online, and there is a chance—not a 
not a good chance, but there is a chance that somebody could intercept if they're if they are hacked in on your phone or if they're just sort of if they're if they're key logging you um, on your device, they could they could see that private key. So I would not. Re, I would never reuse an address. I would just create hundreds of them. Spend 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 a half an hour, forty five minutes, just pasting in uh, private key, public key combinations, and then save this Excel spreadsheet. And as you use addresses, just go in. I like to do this. Just go in and you know read them out like that. So you know so you know which addresses you've used and which which you have not used. Okay. If you decide you want to keep this Excel spreadsheet on a um, on a device on a device like either a, a, a an off drive an offline thumb drive or a CD or something, we could talk about how you would how you would go about securing that. I can give give you a whole separate video on on cold storage security or paper wallet security. Um, it's it's not really a paper wallet technically until you print it out. Like, so if I wanted to print print out this Excel spreadsheet, there there's my paper wallet. Um, if it's just living on a CD or a flash drive, it's it's cold storage. It's cold in the sense that it's offline, but I don't know that it's really a paper wallet until you print it out. Uh, if you are going to print out this Excel spreadsheet, what I would recommend you do, I've, I've done this um, with my own setup here at home. I don't use a printer that's that's a network printer one that is one that is hooked up to the internet I have a I have a printer that I use that is not a smart one not connected to the internet not feeding my because um, I think as far as I know when I was doing when I was doing some research on this um, some printers save save some of the you know some of your um, the data from your um, from the things you're printing and so if they if your printer is saving some of the Excel spreadsheets that you're making and then you were going and hooking that printer up to the internet um, you might you might or, or hooking that I should say hooking that printer up to a hooking that printer up to a, a, a device that's going to be online that that might might compromise your um, compromise your data so just to be extra safe I would have a, I would have a dedicated printer that is not not a smart one you want to use dumb technology when you're when you're doing these things you you don't you don't want anything inadvertently on the internet that you that you don't want out in the, out there into the world so you really want to protect that private key and so I when I do when I do cold storage I I create my pub, public keys and private keys offline and then when I and then if I decide I want to print them um, sometimes I do I do print them out sometimes. I put them in a, I put them in a Ziploc bag in a fireproof safe, and then I put that fireproof safe in a, in in, in, in another safe. Um, if I decide I want to print them out, I I use I have my, my dummy laptop that I don't use, or, or my dumb laptop that that doesn't go online, um, and does not have an internet connection, and is just uh, it's just, from the USB to my offline laptop, and that's and that's it. There is no it's not touching the internet. So that if you want to be extra secure, that's how I would do it. Now, everything I've said in this video, this is if you really want to, you want like Fort Knox level security, cold storage for your Bitcoin. Um, if you are more interested in trading and the day-to-day -day market movements, then obviously this is going to be a huge hassle because, you know, any, any if you're if you're trading a couple times a day getting getting your 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 money off off of an uh, of a cold storage wallet bringing it online trading it it's going to be it's going to be a lot of uh it's going to be a, li a little bit of a hassle um if you're if you're more of a trader then it makes it makes total sense to have your to have your money on a coinbase um or uh, another another trading desk I mean there are lots of them um, just just be aware that if you're doing that that you're you're opening yourself up to counterparty risk but that's also part of I mean part of trading is that so uh, okay I hope I hope I answered some questions about how to save how to secure your Bitcoin save it and keep it secure if you if you decide you want to do it um, if you want to you want to do it this way um, like I said if you 
if you found this useful um, and you would like some more, leave me some comments down below. Um, I'd always, I always like some thumbs up. It keeps me motivated. But this is something I'm super passionate about. I'm happy to talk about this stuff. My friends will tell you I'm happy to talk about this stuff endlessly. So if you'd like more content on crypto and how to secure this stuff and just the day-to-day um, the day-to-day -day use of crypto, moving yourself from a dollar standard to sort of a crypto standard. I'm happy to do to do more videos on this. All right, guys, have a good day. Enjoy our all-time high while we're uh, while we're there, and I'll see you next time.